Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of The Guido Goes Off. Once again, we are in our Saturday sit-down series. This week, our guest, the one and only Irish Devil, Douglas O'Shea. Douglas, how are you doing today? Doing pretty good. What about yourself there, Guido? I cannot complain. I seem to have uh, gotten a lot of folks like yourself wanting to sit down one-on-one, -on -one, have, their, have their voices heard. So, um... Given that uh, we're in the situation that we're in here as we're closing 2020, um, as you know, the pandemic has affected pretty much everybody's life, but one of the big things is not a lot of wrestling shows going on, and specifically in areas where you and I both work. Um, how has that affected you, and how do you think it's affected uh, other independent wrestlers? Uh, it, it sucks. Uh... You know, you you look for these days, and when it's all taken away, you're kind of in a dark spot in the world, you know, and just not knowing what to do. Uh, you can't promote nothing. You can't call anybody out because you don't know when you're able to back up your mouth, you know. Uh, it's, it's tough, but uh, I would say the positive thing that came out of this is starting over rejuvenating ourselves and bringing something different to the table yeah exactly like i said it's um uh, but as you as you and i both know there's someone who that that hasn't affected as far as calling other wrestlers out we will we'll get to that in a minute um but one other thing <laughs> exactly uh, but one other thing um you've been the target of, of a lot of internet hate. Um, a lot of trolls uh, have come after you mocking everything from your ring gear, to your in-ring style, um, even posting uh, your matches on uh, sites that like to, how do we say, um, that like to mock what they feel is lower class wrestling. Um, yeah. How do you, how do you respond to that? Because I know you're a very proud man. You've been in this business a long time, and have yeah. exactly, and have uh, even gotten a sniff of the big time. Why do you think they do this, and how do you deal with it? Uh, when it began, it was very tough. Uh, because uh, I literally just came from having eight many strokes in my life due to wrestling. Uh, regardless of what people want to think about this sport, it, uh, it's all set up, it's all fake. But the emotions that we have in this business are very real. real. The stress of not knowing what you're going to walk out to, what the fans react to, it's very stressful. And then you got these hate sites or these uh, sites that like to belittle people because they don't do a certain move a certain way or wear, uh, wear their gear a certain way or don't wear gear at all. It's, it's like, and it's a small group. I mean, I think uh, the last time I seen them, there's, I don't know, I'm in, in around 10, 12,000 people, I'm assuming, but you're only getting 10, 15 reactions. So it's, I think it was more, the reason that group got so big was just to see if they were going to be on their necks. It had nothing to do with wanting to belittle people besides maybe the 10 or 15 guys who think they're, I don't know, helping me or helping anybody else out. You're not helping anybody else out. You're not, you're not giving no critiquing. You're giving criticism, and you, have, you don't even have the authority to give any criticism, let alone speak to me. But, you know, a lot of that in the beginning was basically my fault because I did an interview. Uh, I was told one thing and another thing happened. My words got twisted. Things that I was trying to uh, sell who I am was twisted in uh, something else. It, it was a horrible thing. Uh, what people don't understand, what people didn't know what that was going on was... Uh, somehow, some way, they got my phone number. 
uh, passing it around to whoever and wh whoever they can get a hold of and, and harassing me, pranking me, uh, calling police stations up, making threats, saying I did this and did that to us. It, it, it's disturbing. Uh, it, it, I don't even think this interview would be able to handle it, let alone do I think I want to really get too deep into it, but it was very, very wrong. I hope all of you out there who did all this suffer. No, I mean exactly. It's, I mean we live in the days of cancel culture, you know where pe where you know people are getting doxxed and swatted like you were basically, and all because all because someone wants power over you. But and, and I, and they, them, but I responded. I should have cut my mouth shut, but it's okay. I'm double so okay. Anybody who knows me, I will respond. Each and every single time, even though I know now I shouldn't have responded. But I did. I can't take it back. I can't fix it. But what I can do is work on it tomorrow, and that's not react to those assholes again. Excuse my language. I'm PT. I don't like to cuss every other word and think I'm a big shot. But no, that's, all, that's all right. That's uh, uh, Maybe I need to take a drink of some whiskey. Wait a minute. All I got is water. I guess this is what pros do. Yeah. But, uh... I just tell everybody out there who gets internet bullied, keyboard warrior, you know, people make a threat, you know, just think about this. They're just a picture like we're looking at right now. What you could do is push that button right there and block. Exactly. You my block list. <laughs> I don't know if it's as long as JBLs, which, you know, I'm on, but <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I earned that, 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 that spot. But, um,. It's for a very good reason. I, I just I just don't like him. But anyway, for we're, we're digressing. But you know, as we're talking about some of these, uh, but uh, as uh, we're talking about some of these uh, um, internet sites that internet sites and fans that have uh, come after you recently, um, the you've been quite the uh, subject on the desk of the scribe for some reason. Um, now we know. Now we know. Now we know. This, we both know the scribe personally, and um, I know he likes to um, do do a little bit of fantasy booking. I know he's been talking about you facing one Attila Khan. Um, one, how do you respond to somebody um, kind of doing that little fantasy booking? And two, would you actually be up for a match with Attila Khan? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I know. He has his fans, and I'm not going to say they're wrong that he's a big, bad, tough guy. He absolutely is. I called him in to the Foreign Solution when the Foreign Solution was around because I knew he could do the job I needed him to do, and that was dominate and destroy. And he did it very, very well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But so, also, I could dominate and destroy. And I know Attila has been against the biggest names in the business, been trained by the best names in the business, Harley Race being one of the trainers. I mean, the guy has a list of achievements that I can't even meet. But the thing is, all those achievements will get squashed if you, Attila, or Steve Craig Myers decide to get into the ring with me. Because when it's in that ring, it's business. And when we're outside that ring, well, it's going to be a street fight. So make your choice. Make it whatever you want to do. But Attila, if you ever want a piece of O'Shea, because you already know I want a piece of you, bring your little buddy with you because I want him to see exactly what I can do up and close and personal. Well, there's no doubting it. And uh, for those who want to see what Douglas O'Shea can do, you can always, um, several of his matches are here on The Guido Goes Off. Um, but now let's, you know, as I said, we would get to a, a certain person in the, in a minute. Well, that minute's here. P.T. Beckham, um, who was a, a recent guest on this show, um, had some very disparaging remarks for you, uh, referring to you as soft, saying <laughs> that you were, uh, too, too, getting too nice and chummy with the fans. So, uh, what do you? What statements do you have as far as Mr. Beckham? As far as PT Beckham goes, 
I shouldn't even acknowledge you because you are nobody and a nothing, and no one really even knows if anybody knows who you are. But I'm going to make you famous for this few minutes I do talk about you. And, uh, you know, I heard your story about how uh, Francis Root did this to you. He promised you this or promised you that. And then turn around, the next show comes up, and you didn't get nothing of what he said, not even close to it. And you're sitting in the locker room doing nothing. Well, well see, you think you're the only one that has a sad story? You think you're the only one who's been kicked down in the back of the locker room or shoved underneath the rain to clean up the, the mess underneath there while everybody else is winning matches and you, you're still trying to scr struggle to make it to the top that's called hard work that's called paying your dues what you've done in a short a short period of time you achieved a lot but see the thing is you were given so much so fast that you didn't realize that you actually had to actually work your ass off and to keep that going on you're going to lose belts you're going to lose matches but what you do is you keep showing up time and time and time again regardless if you like it or not to win the next round but you never chose to do that. What you chose to do was get on the internet and start doing this and asking your two fans, is this fair? And, oh, that's not fair. That's not fair, PT. You need to quit. Screw down. And then you, I mean, seriously. I mean, let me give you a, give me, let me give you a little quick story here, Guido. He talked about, uh, oh, you know, I, I, I almost feel like I shouldn't bring his name up because I think this is going to get more real than people think it is. Because I'm going to tell everybody right now, this is not a storyline. This is reality. This is no story about it. This is real life wrestling. This is the shit that you all wish you could see and you will see if you come to the show and PT, the, PT decides to show up to face me. This is not a joke. This is not a story. This is real deal. You're a big model. You think you're somebody you're not. See, you're... <laughs> Back to where I was going, because you get me frustrated, uh, PT. That's I'm not mad, frustrated, because you're so stupid. See, I had Francis Root walk up to me one day, brought a couple of the top guys in, said, hey, so who do you think is going to be going for the title tonight? Well, obviously everybody was looking at me, and I was thinking me, and they said, oh, no, 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 not going to do that. We're going to bring in Wicked. Now, that's not Wicked's fall, what Frank did. You see, what Frank did was he said, well, Doug, I really need you a whole lot. I really need your help a whole lot. And that's what set me off with Francis is he said he needed me so much, but nothing changed after that day. I was doing exactly the same thing I was doing since day one. Nothing extra. And you want to talk about getting screwed? I had the whole Basically, the locker room's sitting there saying, I need to be the one that goes for the ball. I'm the one that needs to take out Chris Ryan or war. But I didn't get that opportunity because he chose another who hasn't been in the ring but once a year. Maybe two, three times a year in the last couple years. Don't get all butthurt either and come saying, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm coming over and whoop your ass because you're not going to do nothing because that's stupid. My business is in the ring. What you want to do on the street? Well, no, uh, no. Uh, I just would choose not to do that because, well, there's a thing called the law and you're a little too dangerous, Wicked, but off of him because, you know, like I said, the guy has his potentials, the guy has done his work, and the guy gets a, a big round of one applause by me. PT, we've all been through hell and back in the business. You got a tile shot within, within a year. I didn't get a tile shot within 10 years. That doesn't mean, well, since you've been 10 years, that's how long it's going to take me. No, that's not what I'm saying to PT. What I'm saying is, I never gave up. I kept coming back. I never got on the internet and whined, crying, and, and, and bitching, moaning about everything going on that no one needed to see. I get on the mic, I'll get on a video camera, and I'll say it word, word by word, so no one misunderstands what I say, like I'm doing right now. PT, you're a piece of shit. Oops, I said the S word. But you know what, does that make me a Barney badass now? No, I don't. So maybe let me take another drink so I can take another drink of curse like PT did. But I call this water. See, you kept drinking that night. Did you notice that, Guido? Last night, or a couple nights ago, he did this video, whatever it was. He kept taking a drink. That's 
called liquid courage. He has no courage. He's all mouth right now, Guido. Uh, he's talking about Damian Blade, talking about Ricky Cruz, talking about Attila Khan, talking about the, and then everybody's making him famous. Look, or, or he's making us famous. Let's, let's get this clear right now, PT. The only thing you're doing is pissing everybody off. You're getting all the notice because everybody wants to see you get your ass kicked. Everybody's waiting in line to kick your ass. And then you want to bring in a bunch of other guys. Well, Midwest Downs, is that what they're called? Yeah, that's, that's the Midwest the Downs. Midwest Downs. But you pick two of the smallest guys in the world that look like that, and they're going to kick guys as asses like mine. Uh, what's his name? Damon Blade, Attila. These guys are not going to break nothing but themselves. Then this uh, Umbra, is that his name? Uh, Umbra Ian. Ian. Yeah. yeah, Umbra Ian. Throw on a shirt saying, they accepted me when no one else did. Well, they stay with them. Don't be bringing it over here, because if you bring it over here, we're going to take you out in the body bag. Yeah, you're allowed to speak, Guido. Don't oh, get all... Okay, right now. I was making sure, I was making sure wait, you wait, were wait, done. Wait, wait. No, no, I'm sorry. Soft? I am not soft, PT. Oh, I'm more worried about my fans. See, the thing is, we don't, I got on Facebook, what, six, seven years ago. A lot of people didn't even know I had a Facebook. But now the fans are realizing I have a Facebook, and the fans are acknowledging me more than they are him. And that's what's upsetting them, is because the fans like me more than they do him. And you know why they like me more than they like you? Because you're nothing but a fake. I am real. Now you can say something, we don't. All right, well... Um, right. we're hopefully very... Look into those eyes. But once again, um, hopefully here very soon, uh, we'll start be, being able to, uh, run shows, and, uh, this will happen. I don't know when, I don't know if it, it's not really a matter of if, it's, it could be a matter of when, when you two will be on a collision course, and I'm, uh, clearly, you are looking very forward to that day. I mean, let me ask you something, Guido. You've been around now for about, what, three, four years with the uh, wrestling? Yeah, pretty close. From, from what you've seen, what I've done, and what you've seen PT done in his, I don't know, 30, 40 matches, what's your vote? My, I'm, a, I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist. My You're job a journalist, is to remain but you're impartial. A fan. And I'm asking the fan, not the journalist, the fan. Who would you pick? And don't worry, there's only one of us that could kick your ass, and it ain't going to be PT. So you can go ahead and be honest. Once again, Say my name. My job here is to ask questions and get the answers. You want to drink I, of courage? You want I, to drink of courage? I don't. I don't need a drink of courage. My job here is to be the interviewer. My job here is to be the journalist. To remain impartial to cover the facts. And the facts are, one day you are going to get that opportunity against P.T. Beckham. One of you is going to come out on top. One of us. And there he is, your winner. Okay, well, um, I know the fans like to stay in touch with their favorite wrestlers, and for some ungodly reason, you are one of them. Uh, where can... I think be partial. That wasn't partial. That was ignorance right there. See? I want an answer from you. P.T. or O'Shea. You were impartial right there. Don't, 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 don't. Answer. I was stating a fact. You are what I, what I, what I was That's stating. My That's my line. No, your I line. Your it. line is putting the hashtag in front of it. I just said no, I was stating... A That's fact. My line. Fact. Hashtag. Where can Hashtag. where can fans where can fans uh connect with you via social media? We know you're on Facebook. Do you have any other avenues of Facebook uh, and YouTube? If you want to see matches, go to Double Soche. I'm sure you'll find plenty of matches of me. Hell, you might even find matches I haven't seen in a long time. But you know what? The ninety percent of those matches are my arm raise. You go to take a look at one of PT's uh, YouTube matches. <laughs> I think he loses them all, don't he? I know he's a. Uh, I know but he's, he's been successful. Right now, but he's gonna be 
Damian Blade. I'm look. I, I'm not. A, I'm about IEW, Illinois Elite Wrestling. But I'm, you know, and, and I, I don't go like going out promoting other wrestlers and other groups because that's just not. Well, that's just not how it works. But I'm going to make it work today because it's O'Shea and it's my way. Damian Blade, WPW wrestler, ACW or is it AC, ACW, ACW, Missouri. Yeah, ACW. Uh, the guy is a beast. The guy is also intimidating looking. Intimidating looking. The guy is what six foot three, six foot four, two hundred forty pounds. The guy's a beast. And then you got PT Beckham. And then you got Attila Khan, who's been around the world, who's wrestled every name in the book, and and doesn't even speak English apparently, or doesn't speak because all I see is this. You think you're gonna kick his ass? Then you got uh, what's his name? Uh, Ricky Cruz. Yeah. I've met the guy a couple times. That, you know what? The guy's really, really good. And you know what? He's better than you, PT. So what you need to do is go find someone smaller, like a Trix Acidus or something, and go kick his ass because you're in the big leads now. You're calling out guys who have kicked guys' asses like yours all the time. Well, I think uh, we've... Uh gotten all, all the all the uh, answers we need uh once again douglas o'shea i'd like to thank you for your time and uh we look forward to seeing if anybody decides to ask a question on this when, when when this video goes up and everybody asks a question i will respond i will respond so don't be afraid to ask a question if you don't ask a question then we already know the answer o'shea rules well, once again, Douglas O'Shea, thank you very much for your time and joining us here for this Saturday sit-down here on The Guido Goes Off. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you as well for joining in. Uh, for Douglas O'Shea, I am The Guido, and I think we're done here.